Hey guys, this is Mikko. This is going to be a different type of tutorial since I'm going to be making all of this in real time. So if you want, you can just make your own palette at the same time as you're watching this. And this palette is meant for painting, so I'm not going to be picking the exact colors. So first of all, you want to pick a picture that isn't too overexposed or underexposed so that the darkest shadow shouldn't be black. I think this is a bad example since I never would want to color pick this area. As you can see, the tail of Bibi is uh, completely black. So that's not good for color picking. The same goes for the sky. This sky doesn't look like it's going all the way to white. So that's going to be fine for now. But at this phase, when we are looking at the picture, you want to pay attention to this part. This is a phone photo. So you can see that there is this digital sharpening around the fringes of all the objects. So I'm going to fix that so we won't have any noise in the picture when we color pick it because that can lead to accidental color picking of like very rainbow random colors and we want to avoid that. So let's just go to Procreate first. Now that we're in Procreate I'm going to be doing something that will ruin this photo first but it's for getting rid of that artifact possibility. So I'm gonna add just like small under 1% blur. And this will get rid of those small artifacts so that I won't be accidentally color picking something that doesn't look good. Let's make a palette. We're gonna go into palettes and then hit the plus icon and then create new palette. And I recommend that you name your palettes. So for this, I'm just going to name it blue and gold. Okay. I think it's easier if you just like rip this palette part out from the menu. So first I want to arrange my sky colors to the top row. And I always do this for my palette so that there is some kind of logic in where those colors exist. I want to arrange them in a way that makes sense. So when I open the palette, I immediately know where the sky is and where the object colors are. This doesn't mean that this palette can only be used to paint skies with these kind of trees. It just organizes the colors in a way that makes sense. Now for every area of color, you want to pick three different spots. So I picked that darkest part of the sky. Now I'm going to pick the middle area and then a highlight. And you want to be sure when you're picking a highlight that you don't go way too light because that's not gonna give you any editing room later. So I'm gonna pick that. Let's just make sure that it's a... I think when I color pick from here, I can clearly get a greener tone of sky. So I think it's good to have that difference and I'm going to explain later why, but I'm gonna pull this color lower a little bit so that it's not too bright. What matters here is that this color is going to be brighter than the mid-tone. Now, why three colors? As I explained in my brush tutorial where I explain how my custom brushes are built for color blending, I never used that color blending feature to blend between the darkest color and the highlights. So that's why you have a different mid-tone. And I'm gonna show in this palette view how those different colors react. So this is the darkest area. Pay attention to this hue slider. Now when I click the mid-tone color, this is usually a local color. So you can see that it's a different hue of blue as this slider keeps changing. And especially if I go from here to the highlight. You can see it's a completely different color. So this is the reason why you should never mix the shadows and the highlights to find the mid-tones. The mid-tones are always their own hues and that's why you need three of these to make this work. Now for the second set of swatches I'm gonna pick a highlight from one of these trees. Just making sure that I don't pick something that is at the edge of the swatch, because this is for painting. This is not an exact replication of these colors and that's important to remember. I'm gonna color pick this area. And now when we switch between these two, we can see that it's going from red to yellow. 
and then let's pick a shadow color. This is a very drastic difference. I can see that there's some artifacts here in this area, so you wanna avoid those and just pick a color from somewhere where the color is more even, like for example here. So as you can see, the highlight and the shadow color in this case are quite similar to each other, but the mid-tone is different and it's very saturated. The mid-tone is usually the most saturated area in most cases, but that varies depending on what your bounce lights and other objects are in the scene. But there are so many different like branch colors that I want to have more options, so I'm gonna add more of them. I'm gonna just pick this and I'm gonna arrange these later so that they make sense. Actually, that's another set that I think works well on its own. And one way to make this is to arrange them in a gradient so that the colors go from lightest to darkest. But another is to set them into a different types of groups. Now that this is a tree line that is like further in the distance and the atmosphere affects the colors in that way, I want to have a color in between that acts as a kind of a blocker or optionally you can grab the color and then just like drag it so that there is an empty space in between. Another way to mark this would be to just color pick something very drastic in between or just agree with yourself that you're not gonna use any of the black colors and then just add a black swatch there so you know that this is not an actual swatch but it's just a marker for something that I'm never going to use later. I also want to add some of these like um, hay colors here. I don't know what's the real word to use for this. And they're very saturated, so I want to be careful of paying attention to this thing. So I don't want to have colors that are way too close to this border or this border, because that way they will be impossible to edit. So. I want to color pick that darkest shadow again. And I think that's good enough, because that is still something that I can use for painting. But if it was all the way over here, then it's an unusable color for this painting purpose for me. This is just my reasoning for the way that I make palettes. And I think making palettes is kind of like the same preparation work that if you're painting with oil colors that you are mixing your colors on your palette and just getting prepared for painting. And that's the reason why I started liking making palettes and using them because it just gets rid of a lot of that sort of like unnecessary beginning friction from painting and you can just start painting right away. Especially if you have many palettes like I do, I just love having them ready and I can use the same ones again for different purposes. Now I'm gonna pick the mid-tone of this white hue here. And the reason why I'm using this example is that this highlights in a fundamental way the way light works. As you can see, the light color here is warm. And when I color pick the mid-tone, it changes into a very desaturated one. And when I color pick something that is here in the shadow, it's clearly a cool tone. So if you're wondering how light works, here we can see it in practice, where there are no bounce lights or any other factors affecting this shadow color. When you have warm lights, you will have cool shadows. Now, color doesn't always work this way if you have different elements that affect the color of the shadows. So you can sometimes have cool shadows and cool lights in the same area of the picture, but that has something to do with the surroundings, not how the physics of the light work. And it's just a very easy thing to understand when you want to create mood in your pictures. The reason why I picked this is because there are so many different types of colors to pick from, but they are tinted by the same sort of like light color. And that's why I want to have also this um, green color 
as part of the palette to make it more usable in a different types of situations. I think these two are very close to each other, so I wanna nudge this mid-tone a little bit to this side. And you can remove swatches by just holding it and then deleting the swatch. Now, as you can see, I made it a bit more saturated because I made this the mid-tone for this hue. And I still want to add a shadow color for that as well. Here. Now, one thing that I don't have yet is these uh, leaves on the ground. They look so great that I don't know if they are gonna be helpful, but I'm gonna just pick one of these highlights from here. I wanna pick something that isn't already here in the palette. And now I'm gonna be running out of space, so I'm gonna make one more here and then just move this sec section closer to that other set. Sometimes it's a bit tricky to move this. So this is the highlight. This is the mid-tone, is it? That looks more usable. And this is the shadow. So it's a separate set. Now that I'm looking at the picture, I can see that there's also these few extra colors that I want to add to all of this. It's kind of safer to have these two sets closer to each other because I, then I don't accidentally mix the two. But these are a bit messy because like it's easier to mix these two sets, but I will still remember my own logic, which is these three colors. And I want to be making this palette in this view where I can see the three rows. Because if I move into this view and then I grab it out, I don't like the way that this completely messes up the logic of the three rows. So this is the way that I usually use them. Because I don't like to have my palette in view because it will affect my composition when I'm painting. So I wanna add these trees from the background to the palette because they are clearly different shades of green. So highlight color, mid-tone color, and then shadow. Where will I pick the shadow? Here. It's a bit too similar to the previous color. So I'm gonna move this around a few times to find something that works. And by works, I mean something that is uh, clearly not as warm. So I'm gonna move the hue myself to make that darker shade happen. Now it's more usable as a palette because it offers me options because just darker or lighter version, that's not usable as a palette because it doesn't give me any usable information. I like these sort of like very bright colors in this fluffy, super fluffy, soft, little ear of this creature. <laughs> so I want to have them as accent colors here as well. So I'm gonna pick the highlight, then the mid-tone, and these seem to be different, and the highlight seems to be the most saturated of them all, but that's okay. I think that's going to be interesting to have something to use as a contrast in this uh, quite desaturated palette. So I'm gonna pick a shadow color that is cooler. And I think this one is it. Actually, I'm gonna redo that one. I just move it slightly to the left so that it really is cooler in the shadow. Because as you can see, this color is bouncing light inside the ear. That makes it even more saturated than it would be in direct sunlight but because the ear is this sort of concave shape that makes the light bounce around. And that's the way that light actually works. But if I have a shape like that in my own painting, I can make that judgment on my own in that specific area. But in the palette, I want them to be in this kind of like simplified logic so that it's more usable. 
Now, if I want to add something more, I think I want to make sure that I have these sort of like gray tones and I'm going to put those gray tones to the right because they're not part of a tree set. Like this is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. The grays on the right, it's not part of a set, but it's still something that I like to have in this case. And I think that's all of it. Now there are a few hues like here. I can add this gray tone and this light yellow tone, but I don't know if they add really anything uh, special here. So I'm actually going to pull all of these to the right. And that way I can have these extra tones that are not part of any category in their own vertical column. So all of these sets are in sets of three and I can have three sets in a row and that leaves me these sort of three extra slots that are not part of the same logic and still the colors will make sense as long as I know myself how to use this palette. And that's how you create a palette. Now, as you can see, I don't have any whites or black in this image. And that is because if you work within this area when you are painting, then that will leave you editing room later. So if you, for example, color pick one of my paintings, it will be edited so that there will be like super saturated colors or even whites in some cases, but it hasn't been painted that way. So if you see any of my painting videos, you will see that I'm working in this kind of muted area. And that is because it allows me flexibility in how I transform and edit that color. And that's how you create a palette. So I'm excited to see how this palette works in practice. And as you can see, this is a kind of like drab photograph but yet I was able to get a palette out of it that is so flexible that I will be able to paint all kinds of different things with this palette alone. And I think it's good that the palette swatch is limited to a number of swatches because that makes you make uh, bigger decisions on what you want to include in that palette. So I hope some of you were able to create a palette and if you want to use this one, I will slap it on screen right now. Okay. Uh, this has been a different kind of tutorial than I normally do, but I hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments how you feel about this and I will see you in the next video.